both are. I didn't realize my other one was over here. Okay, now we're gonna do the exhaust install. We've uh, had to do a little bit of prying and prodding to get this all lined up properly. And so we're just gonna tape these up a bit and then put the clamps on so everything's in place. Socket or a uh, socket would probably dig better. You got one sitting out already? No, there's one over there somewhere. Start back. It will. I'll cut that design to bit. Oh, that's gonna be yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot it. Just... Okay. Yeah, they don't feel for this in it. Where do you think I should put that? Yeah, those other exhaust mounts definitely have to come off. Otherwise, there's no room for this. Right, now we're getting down to the electronics component of our kit and uh, <clears throat> we're of course opting to use the Motec M1 plug and play kit. We love Motec and uh, this is really a no brainer for this application just because the firmware is very specific to the car, it offers some um, excellent control for boost and it also has some other nice things like auto shift um, which we'll get into a little bit later but anyway we'll just show you what this comes with which is basically We've already done some assembly. Basically, it comes with these adapters here. These are to interface with the OE ECU. There's two of them, one's for the master, one's for the slave, and then two identical M142 ECUs. And these are detached originally, and then you're just gonna use some fasteners that are M5 by 20 to secure the ECUs to the adapter boxes. And then we have several small 
sub looms basically just to connect the ECU with the adapter boxes. And they're all identical um, in that when I say identical, there's two of each. So, and they're, they're, it doesn't matter what you use for the master or the slave. Then lastly, there's this sort of crossover harness that uh, runs from the left side of the car to the right side of the car and connects the master and slave ECUs. So next we're gonna be doing some installation of that. And we're also, in order to configure auto shift, some, some wiring has to be done on the... Uh, uh, and now we've got our kit completely configured and this is essentially what you're gonna see when you're preparing to do the install. And uh, it's kind of as I explained and it's really simple. These are all lettered and you just run them in sequence. And uh, again, from master to slave, each lettered connector is exactly the same. So you can't screw that up. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. It looks really nice. As you can see, this is just a, the, a fully assembled set. So we're gonna be installing these in the OE locations and then we're just gonna be using this harness to run from the one side of the car to the other. Now moving back over here, we uh, the other thing that we're gonna do and you're gonna see right now, we've got some wires coming out of this TCM uh, connector, which is uh, up in here. I don't know if you can really see that, but. Anyway, what we're doing is we've tapped into the upshift and downshift wires on the TCM connector. And what we're doing this is because the, the M1 firmware features a, uh, an auto upshift option, which is on the stock setup, it only does that in like the lower mode. I don't remember, maybe the uh, Strata mode or, or whatever, but we want that in Corsa. And that's what this is gonna do. This is gonna allow us Essentially, with this turbocharger kit, th this thing's going to rev so quickly, it's going to be difficult to focus on grabbing upshifts at optimal times. Well, we can allow the M1 to do that for us. So all we have to do is just grip the wheel and hold on and, and, and punch it, and it's going to change gears for us automatically. So that's what that's for. We're going to have to wire those into the uh, the breakout uh, sub harness. Now what we're doing is setting up our uh, auto shift option, which is going to utilize on the slave connector pins number, was it 14 and 15? Mm -hmm. So we've got our wire that we ran here. Of course the connector, or excuse me, the pins are not yet applied. And we're just gonna run that directly to this slave connector. And again, as we said earlier, this is not a designated slave connector. It's just designated by the fact that we're gonna run it from the slave side. So now we're just getting ready to do that install. And again, you're just using the correct connector for this, excuse me, mm -hmm. the correct pin for this connector. There we go. Trying to get hold of just the red wire so I can push it in. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. I think. Maybe not. What we're doing is just looking for that feeling of a firm seat and then checking on the connector side to make sure to make sure contact. the connector is visible you can see that one's not quite all the way in yet the yellow the red the red tabs and we're done that's it just gonna melt down our heat shrink and she's all set our ecu install we wanted to show you you may notice that this has some different bolts uh motec usa actually sent us a separate package with a kit specific bolt set and that basically they're just much lower profile which we were having some clearance issues with the other so uh, that's a correction to the other part of this video where we said to get some M5x20s. They're actually going to be supplied with the kit and they're a perfect match. Okay, so that's going to wrap up the second part of the actual build of the car. Um, we're basically done with it. You know, we've got everything 
largely tidied up. There's still a few things we need to work with. The alignment of the exhaust, we're not super happy with yet. There's, it, it, it's a little, uh, little off by a few degrees, I guess you could say. Um, it needs to be rotated. Um, looking over the car, the whole exhaust needs to be rotated a few degrees to get proper alignment and so we can reinstall the bumper. That we haven't done yet. We're gonna drive the car a bit, get it tuned in pretty nicely. And then we'll probably go ahead and use some um, exhaust wrap on the uh, on the rear section of that exhaust just to avoid any potential heat issues with the bumper. Uh, Huracan bumpers are really expensive, so the last thing we wanna do is melt the thing. And uh, so next we will document how we address this alignment thing because we've, we've tried to remove the exhaust, refit it a few times, and we're just not quite happy with it. It's close, but it's not perfect. And uh, you know, you definitely want to have everything perfect on a car like this. So uh, next, what we're going to get into is driving the car. We're going to do some in-car footage and we're going to go over tuning and changes that we're making and show you some of the features of the car. We'll show the auto shift. We'll show some rolling anti-lag stuff and um, we'll go into some of the capability of the, uh, of the ECU, how we're able to tune traction control, set boost by gear and uh, do a lot of things to optimize performance and grip without uh, feeling that really aggressive sort of power control that you feel on like an OEM ECU. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.